Hello everyone, my name is Javi. Thanks for letting me be part of your journey on this beautiful instrument, the guitar. Today I want to show you an exercise that will help you develop accuracy, coordination, strength to your fingers, and to also just help you develop a proper technique. This is a chromatic exercise. If you're not familiar with that word, I recommend uh, Google it. I don't want to get into the theory of things right now. This is more about how we're going to be using our, our hands. The idea of this exercise, it will help us isolate fingers. So we really work on, on developing that strength and that uh, agility and that movement that we need to to get our fingers moving properly. Okay, so enough talking, I just wanna, let's get into playing. Uh, just to let you know, I recommend doing this with a metronome right now. I'm just gonna show you how the exercise go. I hope you, you do practice with a metronome. It really supports working on, on exercises like this. What we're gonna be doing is, first we're gonna start with the first and second finger. I'm gonna play on the top string, the sixth string, the E string, starting on the first fret, F. Right now we don't worry about notes, mostly it's all about frets and fingers. So we start with the first finger on the first fret, and then second finger on the second fret, and we do that twice. Once we do that twice, we move up a fret, so now we're on the second fret. Twice again, third fret. keep going if you wish I'll, this is as far as I go and then from here on now we're gonna go backwards so we start with the middle finger eight fret eight seven then seven six six five five four four three three two two one and that's it that's uh, that's the, the concept of this exercise. And we're gonna do that on, if you wish to do all strings, I recommend go ahead and do it in all strings, because then you develop a relationship on, on how each string feels. Pressing on the sixth, sixth string is not the same as pressing on the first string. So you might need a little more pressure or just, just finding your, your way with the string, fifth string. alternate picking so down up down up down up down up I, I will take this as far as actually pushing yourself to do many variations of what you're doing with the right hand as well so I would practice only downstrokes or only upstrokes gonna do the same thing with the second and third finger so now middle and ring finger same thing if you wish also you want to take it to the next uh, level in a sense alternate picking or finger picking start maybe with just one finger so only your index that movement. I'm doing a rest stroke. If you don't know what a rest stroke is, it's when you stroke the string and then you rest on the string above it. So in this case I'm playing the fourth string. Right after I play it, my finger lands on the fifth string. Only index, then only middle. to the third string 
Now alternate, so index, middle, I am. If you don't know that, index, so on the left hand we have finger one, two, three, and four, and on the right hand we have P, I, M, A, and sometimes E for the pinky. Uh, so we do index, middle, I, M on the right hand, and then I'm doing two and three on the left hand. I am, I am, I am, I am. Two, three, two, three, going one fret up each time. simple exercise and but very helpful remember recommend using a metronome so you can increase your speed little by little and then for the last two strings I'm gonna be using the three and four go back to playing with a pick so if you notice playing with a pick and playing with your fingers you get different tones so I if you want to get really serious in the guitar, I recommend getting proficient in both ways. That way you have the, the choice to whatever, whatever you need. Beautiful. And last string, first string. Remember, third and fourth finger. Uh, for example, I noticed at the beginning that I was kind of tensing my other fingers like this. I was like stretching them out. So find any type of situation. What are doing something as simple as this is that like it really allows us to to find any uh, any stress or any f uh, flaw in our position. If you notice, my wrist is very straight. I'm not uh, bending my, my wrist forward. I recommend to try to keep your wrist as straight as possible. There's no unnecessary tension on my hand. Uh, if you think about it, if you have your wrist straight and you try to do this with your fingers, the movement is, is f free and, and free of stress. Once you do this, you're already creating stress right here. So. Try to keep your wrist as straight as possible. For the right hand, for your picking hand, try not to use your arm in this case. When we strum, we might use some more arm. So for now, it's more for wrist movement. So I always say it as, although this is a very tiny doorknob, but I always say, like, imagine that you're turning a, a, a doorknob when you're twisting, especially when you're strumming, it's like a crazy doorknob. But when you're just picking one string, it's like a tiny doorknob. <laughs> one thing that I learned from a teacher of mine, uh, it was a class called Playing Techniques, was uh, to not have any unnecessary pressure with my thumb. And I asked for help at that time because I had an injury on in my thumb after, after a ski trip. Uh, so it was very painful to play the guitar at that time, even to hold a, a, a glass of water, I couldn't. My thumb was just, the tendon was uh, injured. So. And, and this will help you even when you do bar chords. It's a concept that from then it just changed my life, which was to, when you press, try not to think that you're squishing the neck between your fingers and the thumb. Instead, feel almost like you're pulling the guitar towards you and using the, the way of your arm and your shoulder. And then this, this arm is, helps so the guitar doesn't move forward. Uh, so theoretically, you should be able to play without the thumb really pressing anything. And that's just really 
relaxes your hand so much. Okay. So that's the exercise. Uh, play it at different speeds, of course. And then another thing that I like um, is to start incorporating different techniques on your right hand, like palm mute, for example. Because palm mute is not just for uh, metal riffs. <laughs> It can also be played to do melodic lines, of course. So for this exercise, it's great to do palm mute. If you don't know what palm mute is, we place the end of our hand right where the bridge uh, ends or starts, I guess, the way you want to see it. If you're too far in, you don't get a good tone, so you have to find that sweet spot where you hear a nice and clear tone of the of the note. I also recommend switching back and forth, so open, muted. Open, muted. Open, muted. Open, muted. Okay, something that I've noticed and in my own experience and then seeing other players and the whole guitar world is that we tend to think so much of the left hand. You know, it's like you want to learn scales, you want to learn chords, all this shit. And then some people forget about the right hand. There's not so much talk about the right hand. And this is the one that emotion, speed, rhythm, uh, you name it, you know, this This is the one that makes it all happen, the, the picking hand. This one is just, if you press a chord, that's all, you know, this is the one that makes the chord happen. So, the more you can find w different ways to use your right hand, the b more colors you will bring to your music and to your expression on the instrument. So. Another thing I recommend is dynamics. Dynamics, it's the best way to bring a, an emotional change in what you play. Because even in, in an exercise like this, if you're playing hard, it has a certain emotion, you know, like an emotion of uh, I'm assertive and I'm here I am like galloping through the notes. If you play soft, It's like you're cautiously walking through a, a, a path or something like that. So, and then when you mix them, you're not only developing a, a better control of your right hand, but you're also developing this, uh, you're managing an emotional expression of the instrument because for for an audience for somebody that is listening if you're only playing hard the whole time it, it gets boring in a sense uh, obviously there are certain styles that uh, ask for that you know to just be loud and but to me music requires a dynamic range you it, it helps to transmit a message better so on this exercise, it's a great way to develop that that uh, ability to work on hard, soft, medium, loud, super soft, soft muted, harder muted. And especially if you practice it with a metronome, what happens sometimes is when we play soft, we tend to slow down, and then when we play hard, we speed up. So make sure you use a metronome when you're um, working on your dynamics. So you don't lose any speed. Okay? 
So that's it. That's uh, chromatic exercise number one. Pair of fingers, one and two, two, three, three, four. Uh, one thing that I recommend for developing speed is speed bursts instead of pushing, which is also fine, but when we push ourselves only to do a, like a very high tempo. Can get frustrating for those ones that do not have that speed yet. So what I recommend is to do speed burst. And what does that mean is that so you start in a certain tempo. Kind of like that. So we have a metronome or a click 60, 70 or whatever it might be. And then what we do is like, so I'm doing eight notes. One and two and three and four and one and two. And at some point, whenever you feel like it, if you want to do it every other one or do two sets of eight notes or whatever, then I do 60 notes. So it's one E and a two E and a, so it's one and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three and four and two and a two E and a three E and a four E and a backwards. So that allows us to have this little moment of rest, you know, when we push ourselves and then we like bring it back, we do half time. Okay, let's do it with it. all the fingers, two and three. and do the whole thing, then slow down, take a breath and be like, okay, I can do this, speed burst again, slow down, half time, and here we go, okay, so I think that's it, I hope I don't, don't forget anything, I always push myself to, even when I do technique exercises, to be as creative as you can. And that's why I wanted to give you different variations of how to practice the exercise. So just to recap, um, do uh, alternate picking. So for the right hand, alternate picking or only downs or only ups. Finger picking, start with one finger, then the other finger, then do alternate of the two fingers. Uh, doing a right stroke, you can also do free stroke that I didn't talk about because it has a whole different tone. So uh, free stroke is we don't rest and it has a whole different tone actually. Uh, a free stroke is more used on arpeggios but also when we do melodic lines it might be applicable to some situations. So free stroke just as you play you just pluck the string and then your, fing your finger ends up just hovering on top of the string right after instead of resting. You know, the rest stroke has a deeper and, and richer sound. Free stroke. A little thinner. Alternate it. And it's so nice when you mix them, you know, you can start really doing different things with the sound. But anyways, so picking, downstrokes, upstrokes, alternate, alternate, free stroke, uh, uh, rest stroke then you can also uh, work on your dynamics play loud play soft try to find that sweet spot when you're loud but not harsh try to find how loud can you get before the string really gets like stressed out or something like that's too much but you never know you might want to use it at some point you know if you're playing punk or metal or or something that requires like a like a note that is like here it is you know so it's okay sometimes just don't play like that all the time um, soft muted okay I think that's it if you have any questions feel free to message me please subscribe to this channel I'll be giving you all 
more material and more tips that will help you on this beautiful journey. Also, I have a Patreon page that keeps these videos coming. Uh, if you feel inclined to be a patron and support what I'm doing here, I will appreciate that. And I'll see you next time. Thank you all.